Okay, so there's another project I've been working on. Uh, basically, long story short, I've been using this Game Boy a lot lately. Of course, this isn't really a Game Boy. This is just the rear housing. Uh, I'm working on something else at the moment regarding the uh, uh, U3 regulator, and I'm still letting that thing, um, letting the, the material I used on it dry before I can put it back together. But anyway, while that's apart, I want to work on the battery cover here. Now... This is a reproduction shell. This isn't original. I painted this. It was originally clear. I guess you can kind of see through, see to the red paint there. Um, anyway, I think it came out pretty well, and I've been using it for a while. Probably, I don't know, like four to six months now. Uh, there's no wear that I can see, except that the battery cover is just worthless like this latch has no business being here it does nothing it just falls off if you look at it funny and it's not because I painted it I'm sure that didn't help but apparently these shells are just absolutely awful like I said this is a reproduction shell and I've taken some macro photos that maybe I'll go ahead and post so you can see a little bit better but you can see there's really no lip there for the um, the latch to latch onto on this shell this is OE this is an OEM rear housing you can see there's these little notches on the side in the left and right that the latch or the battery cover you know snap you, you can hear that snap and it, it stays on just fine here I can't pull this off unless I use the latch it's this rear cover here it's just it's it's shit and even if I use a, uh, this is of course another reproduction battery cover, but you can hear it doesn't really snap down. It just kind of sets in there. And I mean, this one stays in a little bit better than the one I have, but it's still, it's worthless. Um, now, as far as I can tell, these reproduction shells, this exact one has been pretty much phased out. I guess the tooling that they're using to make them over in China is beyond use now. Or maybe I just got lucky. And when I bought this new shell, which, I mean, I'm not very happy with it for other reasons, but it looks like they fixed the battery cover issue. You can see it has these humongous ledges that uh, this battery cover fits on. And you can hear it snaps down nicely. And it is working. And I mean, like, I, I, I've taken macro photos of the two comparing them, and it's it's night and day. You can, there's a huge difference. And even if we use this battery cover on here, there we go. Yeah, it doesn't, does nothing. No bueno. But if I use my red battery cover, oh, there it is on this ugly thing. I mean, it, it snaps in great. So we can tell that the battery cover isn't the issue. It's the uh, shell itself. Now, I'm not going to go through the effort of taking this shell and painting it like I did this one, uh, even though that would be the easiest solution. Uh, but what I am going to do is what I did with my other Game Boy Advance. Now, yes, yes, I know I have a lot of Game Boy Advance consoles, but that's neither here nor there. What I did with this one, I did a lithium-ion battery mod, this one. Um, it was a long time ago. At the time, I had tons of these cells floating around, and I didn't have anything that ran on double A's, and I didn't have any double A's. So I said, well, hey, I'll convert it, and it worked great, except that this little uh, latch here on the battery cover got in the way of the battery itself so I had to cut that off and then I sat there thinking hmm how am I gonna attach this without a battery latch and what I eventually ended up coming up with was I drilled four holes in both the battery cover and in the rear housing and I just embedded some magnets in there and you know what it works pretty damn good uh, once you remove the latch, there's this opening here. It's not very pretty, but it works great to stick your thumb in there to grab it. And this holds way better than this shell does. So I think that's why I'm going to try and convert it over. Um, I 
not 100% sure where I originally got the idea. I've never seen anyone else do this with the Game Boy Advance. Uh, I think it was on the Game Boy subreddit and someone had mentioned that they used uh, little magnets to hold on the battery cover for a Game Boy Advance SP. And I don't know, I guess that was kind of rattling around in my brain when I came up with the idea for that Game Boy Advance. So what I'm going to do for this one, now of course it doesn't really matter where I put the magnets, it just matters that I put them in the same place on the rear cover and on the battery cover. Uh, but what I've done, I've gone ahead and taken this one apart and I've taken a photo of the inside battery area, I guess. Um, I turned it into a vector image, converted that vector into an STL, and then I 3D printed this thing. And what this does is this is going to sit in here. I can get it lined up. And there's these four little openings here that I'm going to drill through to cut my holes for my magnets. Now I'm going to try and do the same thing I did with this one. It's hard to tell because this shell is somewhat transparent, but I didn't drill all the way through. Um, I'm using these magnets here and this is just a whole bunch of them stuck together. Uh, these are two millimeter diameter by one millimeter height uh, neodymium magnets. I just got them from AliExpress. They're nothing special. They're really cheap and you know individually they're not very strong but you know when you've got four of them together they seem to work pretty great. Um, so yeah like I said doesn't matter too much where they are as long as they're in the same place and I'm going to use this template and the drill stop on my Dremel drill press thing here um, to drill out a one millimeter hole. Now I've already taken these taken measurements from these battery covers here. This lip, you can see it's a little bit thicker right at the edges. This lip is about 2.2 millimeters and the rest of the cover is about two millimeters thick which works out pretty decently because my magnets are only one millimeter thick. So what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and drill a one millimeter deep hole in the battery cover, but while I'm doing that, at the same time, I'm gonna go through the, uh, the back cover as well so that the holes are in the same place. And how I plan on doing that, I will be back in just one moment to show you. Okay, so here's the tool I'm going to be using. I have it set up on my desk. It's basically just a Dremel, well, a rotary tool, excuse me, it's not a Dremel, uh, in a drill press st type stand. There's a little handle on this side here to do that motion, and you can adjust the knobs and spin it about. Uh, let me put this back in the tripod here. Now, Bear with me, I apologize. It's gonna be hard to see pretty much everything because of how that is, but trust me, it'll work. Uh, now to set the drill stop, I'm just gonna use this little chunk of PCB I have sitting around. Uh, this is exactly one millimeter thick. So the plan is to set the uh, Dremel depth of cut that it so that it can't I guess so that it cannot go deeper than this board here. There's a little adjustment knob on the side here that is probably just out of camera. I cannot see, I apologize. You can't see either. Um, and the uh, drill stop, quite frankly, is really shitty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the drill stop to approximately where it needs to be, and then I'm gonna adjust the height on the tool and just bottom out the drill stop. So what's happening is the uh, Dremel, I don't know if you can see it, it's just resting on the PCB and I have it bottomed out against the stop and I'm going to set the height in, in the tool and clamp that down. So that way I should be able to lift it up, move my PCB out of the way and it should stop with one millimeter to spare. However, that is not what's happening. So what I'm gonna do 
Because I'm just going to completely wing it. And by that, I guess we'll see how that works out. I'll just knock the uh, stock down one more. Oh, you know what? That's good enough. That'll work. So one thing to be aware, these stands are incredibly cheap, which is both a good and a bad thing. Uh, it's a bad thing in that, um, you know, it's really light. There's not a lot of weight to it. So if you're, you know, doing almost any, it, it's top heavy. The Dremel's heavier than the stand. Uh, I should have done this before I just set the height, but I want to switch to a smaller bit here because this is entirely too large for the holes that I need to drill. Okay, so I have this assorted set of bits here. There's plenty of different sizes. I, of course, had the biggest one in my Dremel. That's not going to work for me. I need two millimeter. These aren't labeled, and I don't recall what size they are, nor am I good enough to uh, eyeball it. So I got my caliper here. That's 165. Probably the one with the band on it. Well, you know what? I'll try that. Probably too small, but I'd rather... Yeah, the one with the band on it is the 2mm one. I'd rather use the 1.9mm bit and then have to go back and make the hole bigger than vice versa. Alright. Put that bit in sure it's nice and tweaked and yeah I fucked up the stop so let me adjust that one more time that was probably way too high Let's see. yeah A lot of trial or I guess guess and check with tools like this but that's kind of what you get if you buy the cheap shit like I often do okay. that should work okay so now the plan is I just glued the jig into my uh, my Game Boy here, and that's sitting on the bottom. Ooh, before I put this in the uh, tool, I'm going to put some masking tape on here just to, uh, I guess, hold the battery cover on and to protect the finish because I spent a lot of time painting it. I want to try avoiding I don't want to fuck it up if I can avoid it, you know what I mean? Plus, with the texture of the tape on the tape base I have here, it's just a regular cast magnesium or aluminum or something like that base. And I covered it in tape there to stop scratching things. But with tape on tape, it should slide around pretty nicely, which is what I want in this case, but not necessarily a good thing in every case. Okay. And so, I know for a fact you can't see this, and I apologize. But basically, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to drill through these holes in the uh, jig I made. And uh, hopefully I don't fuck everything up. Don't start your Dremel in the hole. You'll fuck everything up. Excuse me, rotary tool. Now, one thing I don't really like about these bits, but I think that has more to do with the fact that I'm using them at entirely too high of an RPM, but that's rotary tools for you, is they tend to melt the plastic a little bit, and so instead of cutting the plastic away, you're melting the plastic away, 
and you get this just like ball blob of plastic on the cutting tool and it stops working with any kind of precision it's awful so excuse me for a few moments while I try and cut this plastic off and not the appropriate use of flush cutters but I don't see any police around There we go. Okay. One hole down, I hope. And that made a scary noise. But it once again did that wonderful thing where it melted the plastic up onto the bit. These bits work really well for milling surfaces, which I guess that's what they're for. Uh, not so much for drilling holes, but they're the only bits I have that are flat on the bottom. That's done. See what I mean about the plastic just working its way up the tool. And what I've been doing is I've uh, just been taking my flush cutters and trying to cut it off. There we go. Good as new. Alright, I'm going to put this back in the tool. Hopefully I don't have to use it again because I'll have to set the height. Let's see how badly I messed up. So I didn't go all the way through. That's a good sign. But the battery cover doesn't come off now. <laughs> well, shit. That's interesting. I didn't go deep enough. Well, that's fine. At least the holes are in the right place. I can go back. See, I was worried about going too deep, so I didn't really press down on the tool. These holes came out pretty good, so I'll set that aside. But these holes aren't even close to deep enough. And again, that's partially because I was trying to be cautious. Because I know the limitations of my tool. And because I figured I can go back, I can always go back and cut a deeper hole. But you can't put material back once you've got it cut off. Come on. Is it this off? There we go. That should work. Oh, this is... Any sort of precision machining is not the tool you want. 
You want an actual freaking mill, not some cheap ass stand. Because I learned my lesson the first time I did this on my uh, original Glow in the Dark Baja Blast Game Boy. I'm going to switch to a smaller tool and get that out. And drill out the center because these things, with how the cutting head is set up, you can see it. it's actually kind of the opposite of a drill. It's really good for going back and forth across the surface, but not so good for going straight down because you end up with this kind of uh, cone in the middle there. So I'm going to go in with a smaller tool. In fact, I'm going to go in with the smallest one that I have and just try and like mill out, mill out the surface a little bit and see what happens. And this is my first time trying it this way, so I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. Perhaps I'll ruin it. Perhaps not. Hopefully not. Oops. Oh, and if I might recommend, don't get a tool where the handle is right in front of the stop because it makes it kind of a pain in the ass to adjust the stop if you have to raise the tool every single time. Okay, that work. It's working! So that worked significantly better than I expected it to. Now I just need to take these magnets and epoxy them one at a time in there like that. And as soon as these are epoxied in here, what I'm going to do, let me get that magnet out of there. As soon as those are epoxied in there and the epoxy has set and everything's all copacetic, I'm going to come back on the other side, put a piece of saran wrap down and uh, install this here and then come in from this side let me get this garbage out of here and then come in from uh, this side and put the magnets down so I can ensure that the poles are facing the proper way because you know it'd suck to epoxy them in and have them backwards but anyway I think this is going to work out it's going to be good 
Oh, and you can see interesting thing here. There, there's these four little divots where the collet of my Dremel was rubbing. That's probably why it didn't cut deep enough. I didn't have a long enough bit in there. Okay, well, um, I'm not going to mix up the epoxy right now, so I guess I'll be back later. Okay, I have returned. So, originally, the whole reason I was using the jig was because I wanted this battery cover to be able to fit onto this shell and vice versa, uh, just in case, you know, if I ever break that other Game Boy and I need a battery cover, I'll already have one with magnets in it and I can just paint this and it'll all be good to go, or I can even use it as is, it doesn't look that bad. Uh, but, I got the holes wrong. <laughs> I, I fucked up the jig. Um, and you can see on the left battery cover, the original one, the magnets are significantly lower. On this battery cover, they're up into that little ridge. Whereas on this one, they're in the meat, except for that one, that one's up in the ridge. But I just kind of eyeballed these ones. That worked out fine the first time. That's what I should have done with this one too. Especially since um, that's, that's not going to work for that anyway. But whatever. Too little, too late. Measure twice, cut once, am I right? Uh, so I'm going to be using this five minute epoxy here. Uh, I've used this stuff before. It's actually pretty, pretty cool stuff. Uh, always, 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 always read the instructions here. And even though it says five minute epoxy, it starts to set in five minutes. And it reaches usable strength in four hours. So this is something that, uh, something that you're going to end up let sitting overnight anyway. Or if you do this in the morning, you're not going to be able to work on it again until the afternoon. Um... But this is, I mean, this stuff was still dirt cheap. Uh, it, it's nice for what it is. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to pull that off and squeeze out entirely too much epoxy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cap that back, put it back in the package before I make an absolute mess. And next, I'm just going to go ahead and start mixing this up. Now, it's kind of hard with the uh, clear stuff. Something like JB Weld is easier, which actually, come think of it, because this isn't clear, I should have used that. Um, but anyway, something like JB Weld is easier to mix up, because you can, you can see, just based on the color, that it's already mixed up. You know, you don't have to keep, keep going, keep mixing. Uh, but whenever it comes to epoxy, I always read the instructions. This stuff is one to one. Um, if it did say on the instructions how long to listen to it, or to, yeah, don't listen to me. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Uh, if it did say in the instructions how long to mix it, you should probably do that. Uh, but I'm just going to wing it. I've used this stuff before. I've already got a pretty good idea of how it works. When you think it's mixed, Keep mixing. Only when you are 100% sure that it is completely mixed can you go ahead and start using it. And this is one of the problems with the clear epoxy stuff. You get all these bubbles introduced with mixing. Uh, and that's partially because I have no clue what the fuck I'm doing. But that's also because I don't have a um, vacuum chamber kind of suck that stuff out. I'm just going to put entirely too much epoxy in that hole. And I'm just using a screwdriver because I have no respect for my tools. But you should probably use like a toothpick or something. And then I'm going to use my hemostats again. Set that in there. Oh. I'm not going to use my hemostats because they're magnetic. Shit, what can I use before this epoxy sets? See, this is something you should think about beforehand. <laughs> Don't do as I do. Oh, shit. There 
There we go. That'll work. Okay. Before I lose that other one. Now, if you're like me, and you get this shit all over your hands, make sure you wash your hands as soon as you get... Oh, son of a bitch. Magnets, how do they work? Also, I shouldn't really use a Q-tip for mixing, because you can see there's plenty of strings. It's very stringy. In case this stuff starts getting hard to work with, which I think it is. Let me get that extra hole ready. I was trying to get it so that all the magnets are facing the same way for no particular reason. Doesn't really matter. It's not like this thing can go on in more than one direction. Alright, magnets are pressed in their holes. And then I'm going to use this cotton schwab. Clean up the extra epoxy. And now I'm going to go put this somewhere where I won't bother it while the epoxy sits. Okay. Clean up my uh, screwdriver. This is one of those cheap screwdrivers that came with a uh, Game Boy shell, so... Really not too concerned. It's a Phillips too. I have plenty of Phillips screwdrivers. Not one of the tri-point or tri-wing or whatever. Eh, good enough. Okay. And so now, I'll take this. And we're all cleaned up. Now, in an ideal world, I would let this set on my desk so that I have an analog to see when my epoxy is set, but I have a cat and I don't want him to get into it. And I guess I'll be back tomorrow while that epoxy sets. Uh, so as soon as that epoxy is done, I can come back and do this. I mean, I suppose I could do it now if I was paying enough attention to the orientation of the magnets but it'll be so much easier to just drop the battery cover in there and then let the magnets interface with the other magnets and then just glue them in that way. Um, I'll be back. Okay, so today is tomorrow and the uh, epoxy has completely cured on this battery cover here. Uh, it still fits just fine. It still doesn't latch worth a damn. But, I don't know how well you can see that, if you look through, if I angle that a little bit better, no. Nope. There we go, you can sort of see the magnets through the holes there. It's hard to see because of the angle and the lighting, yada yada. Anyway, at this point I'm going to put the magnets in the casing itself. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to take a little bit of uh, saran wrap just to insulate against this. Because what I'm going to do, 
uh, is I'm just going to fill these holes with epoxy, drop the magnets in there and let them line up with these. Uh, but I'm going to put some uh, saran wrap on there to insulate it so that I don't end up just gluing the battery cover on. I will be right back. Alright, so I'm back. I got the saran wrap. All I'm going to do is I'm going to just shove this in there, make sure the only part that I care about is that it lines up with those four holes and that this is nice and flat. So I'm going to fold that over and then I'm going to find some tape that I can use to hold this down. I'm just going to use more masking tape because that stuff seems to work pretty nicely on uh, these painted surfaces here. Wrap that around. And I think that's going to work. So let's mix up some more epoxy. going to use my same trusty epoxy screwdriver here and well I guess I'll just mix it up with that cause those uh, cotton swabs tend to leave me with uh, fibers in my epoxy I'm using the exact same epoxy always mix more epoxy than you need. Obviously this is a little bit overkill, but I'd rather have too much epoxy than not enough epoxy. And hopefully that's good enough. I'm just going to keep mixing a little bit more. Follow my own advice here. Okay. Now, I'm just going to gob it up on the screwdriver, glob it up rather. Just drip epoxy into that hole. That is way more than I needed. And then drop a magnet in and you see just sunk right through and settled down to where it needed to go. Do the same thing again, next hole, except not as much epoxy, hopefully. Nope. Yeah, that's so cool. Okay. All right, now I am going to go get a couple cotton swabs to try and clean up some of that extra epoxy.
And by some cotton swabs, I clearly just meant one. Because I'm that confident in my abilities. Definitely should have got two. I'm not going to try and wipe it up. I'm just going to spread it out so that's a little bit smooth. Worst case scenario, I have to come back in here with the Dremel and clean this up. But I think that's going to be alright. Now, final step. Just got to make sure that that's pressed down onto the shell here. And then I just got to leave this somewhere where no one's going to fuck with it. So. That'll hold it down nicely. And then just clean up your epoxy, wash your hands. And then I'll be back when that's nice and set. The, uh, it looks like the resin has finally, uh, cured. Uh, look real cl close. You can't really tell by looking at it, but I, there was a little, there was a part that was sticking up. I took my flush cutters to it. It snapped right off. So must be plenty cured. Plus, you know, it's been like 12 hours since I mixed this stuff up. So seeing as how it cures in only four hours, you know, the five minute epoxy cures in four hours. Anyway. I think we're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and take the tape off now. And we'll see how it turned out. I ended up clamping this thing in my vise just to make sure that the battery cover was nice and flush. There wasn't anything really sticking out. And because my vise was out of the way and this kept it out of the way while I was doing some chores around the house today. Alright, so that came off. That was, that's a good sign. And that should go on there. Doesn't quite have the same fit as my other Game Boy. I think I'm going to have to do some cleanup along this edge here. Here's the thing though, it's it's staying on, so I guess that was mission accomplished. I'm gonna have to spend a little time with the file, maybe end up putting this in the Dremel stand again and and uh, clean it up in the cracks here. But otherwise, this is working great. Again, not as clean as my other one, but way more than good enough. Works way better than it did before. I'm also not going to bother cutting this tab off because it's doing no harm really being there. And it does help as far as removing goes. Plus, if I cut it off, then I'll have to try and and uh, clean that up and smooth it out. And since this is painted, I don't want to leave an ugly spot. But there we go. Yeah, see, it all pops off. Oh, well, good enough. I'm happy with it. Thanks.